So that's where Korea-EU relations stand, but what about Korea-UK ties? Exactly three months since UK's historic decision to leave the European Union. What kinds of changes have we seen in Seoul London front and what changes do we expect down the road for the centuries old South Korea UK relations? Well, I met with Charles Hay, the UK ambassador to South Korea. Hi, Mr. Ambassador. Hello, good morning. Thank you nice so much for you. inviting us to your home. Great pleasure. Thank you. You're very welcome. Well, come on in. And this is a very uh, historic house. It dates back to the uh, to the nineteenth century. It was built in eighteen ninety. Oh wow! Mm. And despite all of the terrible things that happened during Korea's history in the twentieth mm -hmm. century, this place did survive undamaged. And this is the original uh, foundation stone, mm -hmm. uh, which was uh, laid by the consul at the time in eighteen ninety. And um, I see that you have photographs of your family and, and children, young children. Yes. Yes, we've got two small children. That's them there. This was taken a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And then there's some more uh, photographs on the piano here. In the back there, there's my father. This was taken in uh, Laos. He was a diplomat there back in the 1970s. Your and father was a diplomat himself? Yes. Wow. And I lived in Laos when I was uh, very young, for mm -hmm. a couple of years. Mm -hmm. Wow, so you have a whole mixture of cultures in your family, including <laughs> now Korea. Well, Korea is becoming a part of our, an important part of our lives. Uh, and you know, we cook Korean food for the children. Um, our eldest daughter was so inspired by the uh, Rio Olympics that she wants to represent the UK in Taekwondo when she's old enough. Oh, wow. So <laughs> I look forward to that. <laughs> and we're incredibly lucky to have this space. We bought this plot of land back in uh, 1883, I believe, 1884. Wow. Um, I think it cost us 17,000 won at the time. 17,000 won? <laughs> that would be roughly... Not very much money, <laughs> but it was a, a fantastic investment. And it was an investment in the relationship between our countries. Mm -hmm. Because, of course, Britain was the second country to establish diplomatic relations uh, with Korea. Yep. This is the um, foundation stone I mentioned, so that's the modern uh, copy, uh, yes. exactly, of uh, where the old one was. But as you can see, the uh, date of the house being built, 1890, is on the wow. front there. Ambassador Hey, how has your life changed since uh, you came ambassador to South Korea? It's been a year and eight months, if I'm yes, correct. Yes, that's right. Although I spent the six months before that here in Seoul as a student studying Korean. Oh, is that right? Yes, yeah, so, uh, and that was wonderful because I didn't have any responsibilities as ambassador. I was able to travel around on the underground. I was studying uh, and it was a wonderful way to try to get to know Korea a little bit better. I was lucky enough to spend three weeks living with a family in Pusan, which is a wonderful experience. Firstly, I wanted to get to know Pusan, which of course, being the second biggest city of Korea, is very important to us. Uh, but also to live with a family and to be completely immersed in the Korean language and culture is uh, challenging, but it's the best way of, of learning. Speaking of family, you're here with your family, your wife and two kids, two um, young children. Um, how, is, how is their experience um, of Korea and how are they enjoying Korea? They're enjoying it very much and they've, I suppose like many children, they've adapted in many ways better than their parents have. Uh, and before we came, when I found that I had this job, which I was delighted about because it's the job I really wanted, I told the children we're going to Korea and they said, well, where's that? And I said, well, you know, Gangnam Style. And of course they immediately got that because Gangnam Style was very popular. So here is a traditional Korean style pot that my eldest daughter made uh, during a visit to Gongju, of course, with the salad and glaze. Wow. Not perfectly shaped, but but, but very, very Korean. Yeah, very nice. And my other daughter made this bookmark with a Korean style tassel on it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then this is a, a plate made with uh, hanji, Korean. traditional paper. Right, mm. right. Well, one of the um, hot topics these days regarding the UK is, of course, um, Brexit. What is the latest development on that front since that referendum? And we've had some very dramatic political changes in Britain. Uh, our former Prime Minister, David Cameron, stepped down. We now have a new Prime Minister, uh, Theresa May, our second female Prime Minister since Margaret Thatcher. She has formed a, a new government. It's an entirely new government. Uh, and since the, um, the Brexit decision, that government has been putting together 
uh, a negotiating plan, a negotiating position for what will happen essentially between the UK and Europe, but also between the UK and uh, the rest of the world. Uh, in many ways, everything has changed in the sense that we're going to leave the European Union, but just now nothing has changed because all the former laws and rules and so on still apply. Right. And I should underline that is exactly what's going to happen as far as the EU Korea Free Trade Agreement is concerned because one of the big implications is over trade between our countries. But until the moment that the UK leaves the EU, which will be at least two, two and a half years, that FTA will continue to apply between the UK uh, and Korea. And our next step and our next challenge is to replace that with something else which will ensure that free trade continues between the UK and Korea. Now, could that be in the form of a bilateral free trade agreement between uh, Seoul and London? It could be. I mean, there are lots of different options. Uh, one possibility could be some form of, if you like, grandfathering, it's called, whereby the old agreement continues to apply uh, b between the UK and Korea. But we need to work all that out, and we need to discuss that with the Korean government. So it's early days, really. What are some areas that South Korea and the UK could do better should there be a bilateral free trade agreement between the two countries in lieu of the uh, South Korea EU trade deal? Mm. Well, it's a very interesting question because a future free trade agreement is in a way going to be simpler because the EU free trade agreement has to cover a massive range of goods mm -hmm. uh, and uh, particularly agricultural goods that are not produced or grown in the UK. So in many ways it could be simpler. Um, but I think there are ways that it could be improved and one obvious one is the service sector. The current uh, free trade agreement is, is very broad and it does cover the service sector up to a point. But when we look at the trade figures, we see that we, the UK exports relatively few services to Korea and vice versa. So uh, there's a lot that could be done to open up our service sectors. And President Park, of course, has identified the service sector as one of the key drivers of growth for the future. What about on the um, cultural or people-to-people -people exchange front? Do we foresee uh, a change in, in that as well, in that, on that front? Well, I would like to see that intensify even further. And it's been great for me as ambassador here to see how more and more young Koreans are interested in studying in the UK. Uh, and also more British people are interested in learning about Korea, Korean language and literature. And the numbers are rising of British people studying uh, Korean, although I have to say it's still from a fairly low base. But all of that is nothing to do with the European Union. All that can be done regardless of whether we're a member or not a member. Um, and uh, next year, in 2017, we're going to have a year of what we're calling creative futures. And that's a year of intensive cultural cooperation and exchange between the UK and Korea. And that's going to be very exciting. Last but not least, um, by the end of your term here, what would you like to have achieved your goal both professionally and personally? Wow. Well, um, professionally, uh, there's a lot of, for us to do in the future. We now have the, we talked about Brexit and about the need for uh, trade arrangements. I would like to see an increasing amount of trade and investment between the UK and Korea. Uh, despite all of the uncertainty. On the investment side, interestingly, we've not had a falling off of interest from Koreans who want to invest in the UK, and that's very, very encouraging. So I'd like to see an acceleration of that. Um, we talked about the 2017 year of creative futures. I think that's going to be a fantastic way of strengthening the already strong, I have to say, uh, cultural relationships between the UK uh, and Korea. I would particularly like to see progress in opening up the services sector here in Korea for British companies. I think we have a lot uh, to learn from you and a lot to offer. Uh, I think that's important. On a personal level, uh, I would like to continue to work uh, on my Korean. Uh, I have uh, two lessons a week um, and I'm getting to the stage now where I can uh, communicate about some relatively simple things, and I would like to be able to communicate better about more complicated things. Well, I'm sure that you will by the end of your term here, and uh, best of luck to you in learning Korean uh, language, and uh, best of luck to the two countries in formulating a new chapter in the bilateral ties. All right, uh, thank you so much for the interview today.